initially it was it just confused me and i think things that confuse me i get really excited about <laughs> i you know initially they pitched it to me and they said oh it's going to be an action santa claus or you know violence and i was like i don't know that doesn't make it much sense but then i talked to the director who's this like norwegian like big into uh christmas and reindeer and all these things very excited and David Leach, who's a big action guy, uh, done some incredible action movies that I've loved. And then I read the script and I was like, oh, so this has a big action movie component to it. It's got a lot of funny stuff as well, but underneath it is this beautiful, heartwarming story of this little girl whose family life is less, you know, she, she's lacking a lot in her family life and she needs to believe in Santa Claus. And then by the end of the movie, you believe that Santa's real and you, and, and with her, you have this cathartic uh, experience. And I thought that was like quite thrilling. And I thought it would be a real big swing to get it right. I was like, I don't know if we can do this right because it's hard. Uh, but it was exciting to try. And I think the movie turned out pretty well. So I, I'm happy. We started out with, at the beginning of the movie, like, I guess the big question of the movie for me, starting to play this character, and I know it sounds a little silly to go this deep into it, but is like, who is this guy? Like, we all believe in this guy, and we all talk, or our kids do, and we lie to them and tell them he exists. But like, who is this guy? It's some guy in a red suit who comes into your house. He's known as Saint Nick. He's known as Santa Claus. But like, who is he? And so I think what we started with was we started with this Almost the 20s or 30s, the Coca-Cola company created Santa Claus, who was like a guy with glasses and a white beard and a jolly belly and a ho, ho, ho laugh and drank Coca-Cola and delivered presents to kids. And then if you go back, you start to see like there's St. Nicholas, um, who is like the patron saint of uh, lost souls or something and Christian mythology. And then there's also, um, you know, different cultures have different versions of this character. And so we wanted to explore like who this guy was, who he might have been. So we start off with him as this saccharine version of himself that has sort of, you know, he's got the, the nice curly beard and the little glasses and he sort of hates what he's become. He's become this sort of, you know, um, this thing for greedy children to kind of consume like everything else in this world. And as he starts to investigate his life, his own unhappiness leads him back to what he was before and his sort of mythological origins. And this little girl sort of is in trouble and says to him, we don't need a big fat jolly guy who's gonna give us sweets and presents this year. We need a guy who can save our life, my life. We need a protector. We need a champion, we need a hero. And, uh, and so I think that enlivens him and this cynicism sort of melts away and we start to see that, oh, this guy had a purpose that was different than just delivering, you know, nice, you know, nice sweets to little boys and girls that he was, he believed in naughty and nice as bigger ideas. And I think he wants to get back to that. And that's what gives him sort of renewed life. And so that whole arc was really fun to have this dark guy who was trapped in a version of himself that the world thought he was, to have that guy explode because some young people say we want a champion was, was really fun. I mean, and that's the fun thing about it is like you, we get to have a lot of fun with who is Santa Claus? Like he's just some guy who has delivers presents to kids and we talk about him all the time at Christmas, but like who really is he? And I think our film, as you say, goes back into the origins of like, he started out as being not the nicest guy in the world, like as being a different thing. And he sort of discovered this world that he became, but at his essence, uh, his ideas of naughty and nice are, are different than the traditional Santa. It was good, you know, she's wonderful in the movie. Um, she, it's funny though, we didn't really, most of the movie exists on us on radio, you know? So a lot of the times when I'm shooting, um, I'm, you know, she works kid hours, so she can't be there and stuff. So uh, the relationship that we had was almost, um, it was sort of brief. Like I didn't really get to know her uh, that well. But um, 
but she's so wonderful in the movie and she's just such a pro that, um, you know, it comes off really great. But we were sort of compartmentalized for most of the movie. Um, but, you know, when, and, and so I didn't really even know how it was going or how it was working. You know, I would see some stuff here and there. I'd do some stuff. But then to see it put together, and when we finally got to shoot that, that last scene, um, it really felt special with her. She has a sort of clear innocence and a sweetness that just shines through, and she's just uh, endlessly charismatic. So we were very lucky to have her in the movie. And then, of course, I don't think the movie would work if we didn't have also a powerful villain. In, in, in this case, with Scrooge, played by John Leguizamo, who's also great. I love him. I just love him. He's someone who I'd known from, from New York. We both are New Yorkers, and uh, I've always wanted to work with him. But as things go on, you think, oh, it'll never be right, blah, blah, blah. And then this came about, and I was just so... He just elevates the movie in such a way. He's such a, you know, legendary, iconic actor, and he elevates this whole... Um, bad force in the movie that needs to go against this guy. And it's, he's just so, so wonderful. I can't say enough good things about John.